Welcome Yogi to this full length chair yoga class. This class has seated and standing poses only, so it's suitable if you're not comfortable getting up and down from the ground. As a full length class, it will include poses to move your entire body, as well as some time for relaxation, and a guided breath and guided meditation practice. If you have a couple of yoga blocks, one or two, grab those, they could help you. But if you don't have them, you can still do this practice without. So start please yogi in a comfortable seat. You can close your eyes for a moment. Shrug your shoulders up to your ears when you breathe in. And then let them relax down while you exhale. Now start to notice your breath. And if it feels a little bit shallow, invite it to deepen. So you have a sense of expansion on your inhale. And then a slow, steady exhale. And if you're able to breathe in and out through your nose, through your whole practice, please do so. Just expansive inhales. And long exhales. Your shoulders relax. Just letting go of anything that's happened so far today or anything you're anticipating later in the day. Allowing yourself to settle here in this moment with your breath. So let's start to move. Begin by stretching your hands up, if you can, both overhead, or as high up as you can. Now start to open the hands up really wide and then scrunch them up. Open them wide, scrunch them up. Open and close, open, close. So you're gonna do this as quickly as you can. Just start to warm up your hands and your wrists and your arms all in one go. We'll do this for another 10, nine, as big as you can, eight, Seven, six, remember to breathe, please, Yogi. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Shake it out. And just circle your wrists. We're going to put your hands together and clasp them, and then draw a sideways figure eight. So just using that heat you created then in your palms and your wrists and your forearms, and gently start stretching your wrists. I get a click out here and there, that's okay. And can you go backwards, that same shape, the other way? Get your brain involved in your yoga practice. Just a couple more times. Good. And then take your right hand and turn your fingers down, palm facing away from you. And take your left fingertips around your right fingers. Press your right heel of your hand straight forwards. Keep your shoulders relaxed. Sometimes we get a bit tense in this. Shoulders relaxed, heel pressing away, hand pulling towards you. Three more deep breaths here. Good, last one. And relax, circle that wrist again. And we'll do the same thing with the other hand. So left hand, palm forwards, fingers down. Hold on with your right hand, press your left heel of your hand away. Draw the fingers back towards you and relax both of your shoulders. And once you get into this, take a deep breath. And then three more of those, please. In and out through your nose if you can. Deep breaths, your priority, however they happen. Last one in. And release the pose as you exhale. Circle that wrist too. Good. Now let your hands rest by your sides. And start to shrug your shoulders forwards and up, and back and down. Forwards and up, 
and back and down. Get to a few more of these. Just working our way up the arms. And let the right arm take this bigger. So left arm relaxes for a moment. Can the right arm go forwards and up and back and down? And forwards and up. And if this feels too crunchy in your shoulder, don't take it in this full rotation. Continue to shrug instead. So if it causes you any pain, please avoid that. In all of our poses in our yoga practice, it's okay to stretch and to do some effort, but there should be no sharp pain anywhere, no forcing needed. All right, take this right hand up overhead, turn your palm forwards, bend your elbow, see if you could bring the hand to the nape of the neck or the upper shoulders, and then straighten the arm back out again. Take it out to the side and look left as you pull the hand back. Breathe. Good, look forwards, send the hands straight up again. Bend your elbow, that's it. Straighten it up, take it out to the side, then look out to the left, pull the right hand back. So you're stretching your neck and into the front of your shoulder. Look forwards, lift the hand up, bend your elbow, Stretch it up and then relax your right arm. Give it a rest for a moment. <sighs> okay, relax, take a deep breath. Release your left hand and start its circle. So going forwards and up and back and down. And in this side, if you have any discomfort, skip these circles. You don't have to do any part of a practice that causes you that pain. Two more, please. And another. And we'll finish when we get up to the top. Turn your palm forwards. And if you can, bend your elbow. Just as far as it will go. And straighten it out. Send the arm all the way out, a little lower than your shoulder. Thumb faces up. Look out to the right and pull that left hand back. Pause here as you breathe. Turn your head forwards. Come back to neutral with the hands, stretch it up. Bend your elbow. Stretch your hand up. Send the hand out to the side. Look right as you pull back through your left hand. Look forwards, left hand up. Bend your elbow. Stretch it up and release. Roll your shoulders around a little bit. Give that left arm a rest now. Let your hands rest on your knees, on your thighs. We'll give them a total rest in this time. Lift up your chest and arch your back. And as you exhale, round your back, chin to chest. Inhale and arch, looking up. Heart comes forwards and up. Exhale and round. Nice and slow and steady movements for your spine. Arch and round on your exhale. Chin in. We'll go twice more. Just take your time. And rounding out. Come to a neutral spine again, sitting tall. Tilt your head to the right. And move into a stretch for the left side of your neck. And lift your head, tilt over to the left. Left ear in the direction of your shoulders. Make sure your shoulders aren't lifting up to your ears. That relax down, the head is moving over to the side. Find a stretch and then pause and breathe. Good. 
Lift your head up. And just drop your chin towards your chest. And then lift the chin up, but don't let your head fall back. Keep your neck strong. Drop your chin back down to neutral. Tilt your head to the right again. And this time, take a hold of a chair with your left hand. So just hook them around the chair seat and lean a little to the right too. And let's deepen into the stretch. Breathe again here. Okay, lift your head up. As you exhale, tilt your head the other way. Hold on to the chair with your right hand this time. Let go with your left. Lean a little to the left with your head and your shoulders just until you feel that stretch. And breathe. Lovely. Come up. Drop your chin towards your chest. And lift it up. Good. And back to neutral. Take your left hand, circle it up, out and up, or forwards and up if that works better for your shoulder. Hold onto the chair with your right hand and start to stretch over to the side of a room. As you inhale, lift up a little bit. And as you exhale, reach again. So a little breath of movement. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, continue to reach. And again. And reach. And lift some, create a little space in the right side. Exhale to stretch your left side. One more time. And this time we'll just hold in that side stretch for five, four, three, two, and one. Bend your elbow, come up carefully. And let's go straight into the other side so you're not wonky. Take your right hand up, breathe in. Hold onto the chair with your left hand, anywhere works. And reach over to the side of your space. As you inhale, lift a little bit. And as you exhale, reach. Doing good, Yogi. Inhale, lift a little and reach. Twice more. Last one. And this time we'll hold that last one for five, four, three, two, and one. Come on up, bend your elbow. And sit your way up. Again, roll your shoulders. Well done. Now, if possible, cross your right ankle over your left. If that isn't possible, feet next to one another is still fine. If you're able to do that comfortably, you could try crossing your right knee over your left. And again, if that doesn't feel good, go back to that previous variation. Take your left hand to your right knee. Your right hand's gonna sweep back behind you, straight back, arm parallel to the earth, parallel to the floor. And we'll hold, sitting tall, look back, stay twisted, but then look forwards over your left shoulder. You do that twice more, look back, and then forwards. And we'll glance back. Just stretching your neck as well as twisting your spine, and glance forwards. Neutral and rest a moment. Hands to your knees and a slight lean forward. So whether your feet, uh, your, sorry, your knees are crossed or not, it works the same. Just lean forwards. Relax your elbows in close to you. Make sure there's no strain in your arms, giving them a little bit of time. As well as a gentle hip stretch here as well. Sit your way up. Uncross your legs, and once again, same thing. So feet can remain like this. You can cross at your ankles if that's possible, or if possible, you cross at your knees. Any part of that works. Right hand comes across, your left hand goes out and back, 
about parallel to the ground there or thereabouts. If it's too heavy, I didn't mention this on the other side, you could rest it on your chair. Look all the way back and forwards. Just moving your head side to side. Trying to maintain as much range of motion in our necks as possible. Look back over your left side and over your right. One more time. Look left and right and neutral. Unwind, relax your arms, take a deep breath in and lean forwards towards your knees. Get sit your way up. Everything we've done so far has been very focused on the torso from waist up. So let's move down into the legs a little bit. And this is where if you have a block, it's useful. If you don't have a block, don't worry. You can do all of these things without. So for a start, put your block in front of your right foot, if you have it, on its tallest. And you can see whether your heel could rest on it. Okay, and then put your foot out to the side. We're going to strengthen the front of your legs a little bit. Sit up tall. You're going to lift your right foot up and across and in. So like I said, if you don't have a block, it will be the same. You would lift, cross and out as if you had a block there. So again, lift, cross, in. And lift, cross, out. Just one more time. Lift, cross, in, do the best you can. Lift, cross, out. Well done. Now rest your heel on the block if you have it. If you don't have a block, rest it just on the floor is perfect. Flex your foot. Rest both hands on your left knee and lean forwards. Make sure your block is balanced. Lean forwards to stretch your hamstring and calf. Keep your spine long. If you feel yourself rounding your back, it may not be as good a stretch for your legs. So better to be high with a long straight spine than it is to be low with a rounded one. Relax your jaw. One more full breath. Lovely. Sit your way up and slide that right foot in. Now, can you take a hold of the knee or the shin or the thigh, should I say? If all of that feels too much for you for any reason, it's too far a reach or there's some tightness, you could grab your block or your book and put it underneath your foot and give it a little support. But if you're able to do it without the support, give it a squeeze in. And we're going to let the knee get heavy into the hands and round your chin towards your chest. Relax your shoulders. Let the weight of your knee stretch lightly into your space between your shoulder blades. Great, good, come on up. And release your foot, move your block into it in front of your left foot. Check its distance. And like I say, if you don't have a block, no problem. You can do all of this without. If it's there, your block's to the left side of it. You're going to inhale and lift across and to the inside. Try to sit up, not back onto your chair. Inhale, lift and across to the outside. Again, breathe in and lift. Exhale to the inside. And lift, outside. One more time. Good, and again, and out. Well done, put your foot onto the block. And like I say, if there's no block there, heel onto the ground works the same. Flex your foot, hands to your right knee, puff your chest up and lengthen your back. Keep that length and lean forwards. Just breathe deeply in and out through your nose still if you can. Sit your way up and slide that right foot in. 
Once again, take a hold of the thigh or the shin, whichever you can reach, and squeeze it in towards you. And if that feels too much, you can't reach, or it's too much of a bend, you could put your foot on your block and hold there instead. Okay, so find the variation that serves you today. Breathe in. And when you exhale, let the knee get heavy into your hands. And if your foot's on the block, you'll round slightly. And breathe into the space between your shoulder blades with the chin at your chest. Good. Come up and let go of your foot, let go of your, uh, sorry, your shin. Let's turn to the side and take a lunge. So this will stretch out those same muscles we were just strengthening with the leg lift here in the quad and so as. They're important to be strong to lift your legs when you walk, but they can also get tight when we sit lots. So this stretch will stretch them out. So turn to your right on the chair. Keep holding the chair, make sure you don't topple off sideways. Hold the chair for safety. Right thigh is on the chair. Hold then the chair with your left hand between the thighs and stretch your left foot back. So you've got a good grip on the chair with both hands. Your right heel is underneath your knee. If you're on your toes or something, see if you can put your foot flat. And then your left leg could be here, that's okay. Or you might be able to stretch it further back, just depending on your anatomy and how, how much room you've got in that leg. And turning to the side of your mat still, the side of your space, you're going to lift up your chest and press back through your left heel. And you can either stay as you are, holding the chair safely with both hands, or you can stretch your left hand up and almost back towards where your left heel is to stretch your chest a bit. Take another full breath here. And then finding neutral with the arm, especially if it reached back, if you have your hands on the chair, see if you feel like you could stretch it up and then reach towards the back. So over the top of this chair back here. So you side stretch. Come out, hold the chair, slide your left foot back in and turn forwards. Good, then continue to spin. Swish it all the way around to the other side. Get your left heel under your knee. Hold the chair with both hands and see if you can stretch your right thigh back a bit. Make sure you've got plenty of you on the chair so you're balanced. Hold on, lift your chest, press your right heel back, and then you can wait here and breathe deeply, or you can stretch your right hand up and pause here. Just a few breaths in this pose. A supported lunge. Now if your right hand is back, bring it to neutral. And if it's on the chair, see whether you now feel safe enough to stretch it up and towards the back of your space. So over the top of a chair for a side stretch into your right ribs. Good, bend your elbow and slightly release, slowly, sorry, release. And start to release your right leg, turn forwards. Keep your feet wide, shuffle forwards on your chair so you're not too far back. Feet turned out, knees wide, fold forwards, hands down. Now, if you feel some stiffness in your legs or your back, this is where your block or your book can be useful. Sometimes it feels good to be here. Also, if you don't like to take your head um, low down for any medical reasons. You don't like to drop the head lower than the heart or fold over. The block will prevent you from going too far. So let's find a comfortable stretch here. Two more deep breaths, Yoga. And walk your elbows up to your knees. And then all the way up to sitting, wiggle your feet in. Take a deep breath and out. And a few stand and sits, let's start to get up to our standing postures. So 
shuffle back on your chair, make sure your chair is on your mat, it's not going to slide anywhere. You can always do the arm actions only if that feels better. Circle your hands up, this is arms actions only, breathe in, reach up, exhale, reach them down. One more, one more go at that, inhale, hands up. Exhale, I'm down. And if you want to, stand up, hands up, breathe in. Exhale, sit down, grab the chair if you need to, make sure it's there and try to not bump. A few more times like that, inhale, stand up. Exhale, sit down carefully, slowly, slowly, slowly. No bump if you can help it. Inhale, circle it. Exhale, sit down. Twice more, inhale up. And sit. Last one, and we're going to go super slow on the sit. So stand up, and then as you exhale, bring your hands forward. And breathe in. And then slow as you can, make sure it doesn't hurt your knees, and if you need to sit more quickly, that's fine. You need to sit slow, 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 lower, lower, keep breathing, lower, 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 counterbalance yourself, three, two, one, land lightly with a creak, and all the way down, rest your hands. Good. Now stand up, and we're going to stay up this time, I promise. And relax your arms down. Well done, Yogi. Roll your shoulders. Loosen that out. I'm going to move my chair now to the side. If you want to put yours directly in front of you, okay? And you're going to put the chair top so you can reach it. So facing your chair with your fingertips on the top of the chair. So make sure there's nothing else in your way, especially behind you that you could fall over. So everything's clear behind you. And you're stood up and relax your arms. Just standing for a moment. And notice before we move anything, your posture. So your feet are about hip distance apart. And if they're turned out or in, how does it feel to make them parallel? And notice if you lean into your toes and grip on, or whether you lean back in your heels and have to tuck your tail. Find a center point in your feet. That's good. Then a little bit of engagement in the glutes and the quads. Breathing deeply and notice the position of your hands. If your hands are in front of your thighs, draw your shoulder blades together a little bit to bring your hands by your sides if you can, working on standing up with good posture. If your chin is high, drop it. If it's low, see how it feels to pick it up just a little bit and hold there for another breath. Now circle your hands, turn your palms out, circle them up to the ceiling. Look up, and as you exhale, bring your elbows wide into a cactus, so they're 90 degrees. Inhale, squeeze your shoulder blades together. So again, this is good for your posture. Strengthens the upper back. Good. And when you exhale, as if you're diving into a pool, chin to chest. Inhale, pull your hands back, elbows back. Strengthen your upper back. And as you exhale, hands forwards, palms down, chin to chest. So if you need your chair at any point, you can always reach for it. Inhale, open up, strengthen your upper back. And exhale, reach forwards. Now turn your palms and stretch them straight up to the ceiling. And release your hands to your heart. Bring them to the top of your chair and step your way back. Downward facing dog in chair yoga. So this is with our hands on the top of a chair and feet under the hips. You just walk back until your spine is long. And depending on your shoulder flexibility will affect what height your torso is at. Now bend only your right knee and keep both feet glued to the ground. Now straighten your right leg and bend only your left knee, keeping your left heel on the floor. And come back to both legs straight. Soften your knees a little bit and step your right foot forwards towards the chair. Turn your left heel down to, so the toes point to 11 on a clock or to the top left corner of your mat and hold onto the chair as you lift your torso up. Your right knee is over your ankle and bent or it's a little bit behind, but try to not strain it by letting it go too far forwards. You're still facing your chair. If you want, hold on with your right hand and stretch your left hand up. 
And if you feel confident in your balance and you feel okay with it, you can take both hands up, but really maintain safety in your poses. So if that means keeping a finger or a good grip on the chair, that's okay too. Well, hold for three and two. And one, bring your hands down to prayer in front of your heart and down to the chair. We're going to stand on your right foot, so maybe move it just a few inches further away. Hands on the top of a chair for balance. Lift your left foot up and bow forwards towards the chair. Now give that left leg a little pulse. Lift and lower. Five. Lift and lower. Four. Three. Two. One. Well done. Pop the toes back down where they came from with the foot down and step your right foot closer to the chair again. Now straighten your right leg without locking it. If you're flexible in your joints, you need to soften your knee just a tiny bit. Lengthen your spine out and lower down to your forearms if that's comfortable. Lift your tailbone up, arch your back a bit, and hopefully you feel a stretch in your right calf or hamstring. Some of you may need to go a little lower. Using the chair at any height or the, the block also works. If you feel yourself rounding, come up so that you can keep your spine nice and long. We don't want to put too much strain on the discs in your back when we fold, so it's more important to keep a neutral spine than it is to reach low. Bend that front knee to release the stretch. Hands to the top of a chair. Step back again. Find your downward facing dog. Bend your right knee. And bend your left knee. Both legs straight now. Step your left foot forward, so lift your torso up. Left foot steps towards the chair. Spin your right heel down, so your right toes point to one on a clock. And bend your left knee. Upright your torso. And you can hang on with your left hand, especially if you feel a little wobbly here. Right hand could explore going up, perhaps. Or you could keep both hands on the chair if you need to. If you feel safe here, you're breathing fully, you feel good about your balance, left hand can come up. I will hold five, four, three, two, and one hands to prayer and to the chair. Slide your left foot back just a few inches so you can balance on the left leg. Hold on to the chair, safe with both hands. Lift your right foot up and bow down towards the chair. Five pulses here, five. Lift the left, right leg, sorry, and lower. Four, lift and lower. Three, strong core. Two, lift the navel to the sky. One, good. Step back with your toes. Left foot steps back towards your chair again. You've still got your right foot slightly turned out. Both legs are straight, but not locked in that front leg. Puff up your chest and start to lean forward so maybe you feel a stretch holding on with your hands. Maybe you want to come to your forearms. Make sure you lift your tailbone up. And if you want to go lower, you can, but be sure to not round your back. Mm, breathe, Yogi. Good. Soften the front knee, walk your hands up onto the chair, step your way back, back into your down dog. Bend just your right knee, both heels stay on the ground, stay on the floor. And switch to the other side. Both legs straighten out. Lift your chest, step your right foot forwards again. Now turn your left foot all the way out to the side and lift your torso upright. Hold on with your right hand. So you'll turn your torso towards the side of your mat, the, this, uh, sorry, side of your room. Bend your right knee. There we go. And so the temptation can be for that knee to fall in. You're going to keep pulling it out to the right, nice and strong. If you want to, you can stretch your left arm straight out. This will strengthen your arms too. And if you feel comfortable with your balance, you feel safe, stretch your right arm out as well. Now you can keep your right hand on the chair for that bit of stability. Let's work the tracking of your right knee and the strength in your right leg. Straighten your right leg out and bend. And straighten it and bend in. 
Make sure it's not falling in. One more time, straighten and bend. Lovely. Hands come to prayer. Find the chair with your right hand, spin onto your left toes. Step your way back, hold on the chair with both hands. Back to your down dog. This time a little sway of your hips side to side, like a dog wagging its tail. It's getting into that low back and waist a bit with these movements. And then lift your torso enough, step your left foot forwards, turn your right toes all the way out to the side, bend your left knee and make sure that the knee goes straight towards your chair. Turn your torso to the side of your space and if it feels good, stretch your right hand back. And you can stretch your left hand forwards or hold onto the chair. Straighten your left leg out and bend. Straighten and bend. One more time with your breath, yogis. Inhale, straight. Exhale, strong forwards, bend there. Good. Left hand to the chair. Spin to your right toes. Hand to the chair safely. Step your way back, downward facing dog, final time. Walk your way up to your chair and let's balance. We're going to have our fingertips on the chair. Now, if you feel safer with a wall, you can go and stand with your fingertips on a wall. That's actually my favorite way to balance, but I won't assume you've got a wall close to you, so we'll use the chair as well. So you're going to stand with your fingertips on the chair with good posture. And I'm going to turn to you so you can see what's happening. You're going to lift your right foot, turn the toes out, the knee out, and either put your toes on the ground or your foot on your calf. Okay, so either one of those is, uh, is perfect, wonderful. Keep your left glute engaged. So sometimes we feel like we could just relax in this pose, but actually makes the balance more difficult. So stay strong in your legs. And if you're holding on with one hand, sorry, with both hands, you could maybe bring the other hand into a cactus shape. So that same shape we did earlier, maybe a cactus tree. If your balance is there, you're breathing fully and you feel safe doing so, you could bring the other arm into a cactus tree, either balanced or more cactusy at an angle. That's it. And come out of this side. Still facing the chair. I'm just facing you so you can see the pose. Switch to your other leg. Turn your left foot out, balance on your right leg. Toes can remain on the calf, oh, sorry, toes can remain on the floor for an extra stability, extra balance, or foot on your calf. Engage your right glute, firm into your belly, widen across your collarbones and set your eyes on one single point, laser focus. And like I said, if you feel comfortable, you could let go with one hand, maybe with both hands, or if you need to hold on with both hands, that's fine. Sometimes one finger is all you need, just a little bit of touch to help you find that stability. And if you wobble out, it's okay, and have another go. Just build in your muscle memory for balance, keeping your balance strong. Good, Yogi. Come on out nice and easy. Just pedal your legs a little bit, lift and lower. Tippy toes and back down. Now you're still facing your chair, you're going to turn your chair to face you. So the chair seat will face you. and we'll fold forwards. So hands to the seat of a chair is your first stopping point. If you need a little higher, you could have your block on the chair seat, that's also an option. And if you want a little lower, that's where these blocks are useful. You can put them underneath your hands and go a little bit lower. And if you have a comfortable fold with your fingertips on the floor, that's fine too. But just like we did earlier when we had our legs separate in pyramid pose, it's Usually better to keep your spine long and neutral and work on tilting your pelvis forwards rather than being rounded in your back, which can put pressure on your discs. Just a couple more breaths in a forward fold.
and carefully start to come up. Bend your knees a little bit. Walk your way up, up your chair, and all the way up to standing. Roll your shoulders back. That's it. And we're going to come back down to sitting for our final leg stretches. So make your way back down to sitting on your chair. Okay. So we're going to come into a hip stretch. And depending on the rotation of your hip is going to decide how comfortable you are, which height we should come to, should I say. Right foot over left, right ankle over left is our starting point. And if that feels okay, you can cross at the knee. We did some of this earlier with your twist. And if you're okay here, you can go deeper this time and put your ankle on your knee. So if this gives you any trouble in your knee or your hip, go back a step or two. So either here or here, especially if you've had either knee or hip surgery, the previous ones may be more suitable. And we're gonna sit up really tall, arch your back. And with that length, lean forwards until you feel a stretch in the right glute or hip. So around this outside of a right leg. Now, if you're folded forwards a little bit, look at the floor in front of your mat. If you're sat upright, you'll look straight forwards. So just keeping the net, neck in a neutral position. Not forcing the stretch, just breathing deeply. Good. And we'll come out of this side, uncross the ankle. Let's do that same thing on the other side. So again, choose, do you want to cross at your ankle or your knee? Mm, if that's okay, cross ankle over knee. And like say, if it gives you any discomfort or you've had surgery on this side, go to some of the previous variations. Arch your back, sit up tall and lean forwards. Set your neck into that neutral position so you're not craning too far forwards or too low down. And once you feel your stretch, simply breathe and relax into it. Get set your way up, please, Yogi, and uncross. Just give your knees a little swish side to side. Good. We'll take another seated twist. We didn't twist very much today, so we'll have another chance to do so now. Right hand to left knee, left hand on the chair behind you, and a gentle rotation. Close your eyes as we come towards the end of your practice. We're starting to slow everything down a bit. Carefully unwind from this side. Take your left hand across to your right knee if you can. Right hand rests on the chair behind you and turn to face back. And turn your way forwards. Good. A couple of folds to finish. If you have a block, take your block, put it on its highest and put your right foot on it. Now a book could do the same thing with any elevation, even a half inch. And just lean towards your right knee. You can rest your hands around the shin. Just relax here. If you don't have your block or a book, you can widen your feet and lean towards the right knee that way. If you have got that little bit of elevation available, you go with that. A couple more breaths in this, please, Yogi. And carefully sit up under your foot. Switch your block to the other side under your left foot. 
Like I say, if there's no block, it's okay. Breathe in. As you exhale, lean forwards towards the thigh. Close your eyes. Make sure the block feels stable under your foot. If it feels wobbly, turn it down a height or two. And sit your way up, move your block. We don't need it now. You can widen your feet just a little wider than your hip distance and our final pose is to fold. So again, elbows onto your knees and you can either hold this height if that's best for you or you can lower down fingertips to the floor and simply relax. It's time for Shavasana, for relaxation yogi. So walk your elbows up to your knees. Come all the way up to sitting. Wiggle your feet in to lower a comfortable distance apart for you. Shimmy back on your chair and lean back into your chair seat. Let your hands rest on your thighs. Maybe lightly interlaced. And if this feels like it's heavy in your shoulders, put a blanket over your thighs and lift up your arms a bit. If you feel a little chilly, wrap something around you. Get comfortably warm. Make sure you can relax here. Close your eyes if they're not already. Make sure the feet are relaxed, the toes, tops of the feet. Feel that comforting connection of the earth to the soles of her feet. And relax the lower legs, the knees, your upper legs, your thighs, and all the way up into the glutes and the pelvis. But sometimes we hold tension without realizing. And relax your belly, your ribs, your shoulders, and your arms. All the way down to your hands, the fingers and thumbs. Make sure there's no tension in your jaw, your tongue, your eyes, your cheeks or nose. And let yourself relax. I'll let you know when we're ready to practice pranayama.
It's gently reawakening the mind. The body can stay relaxed. Relax your shoulders if any tension crept in. Same with the legs. And we'll practice some deep breathing. So quite often we fall into shallow breathing habits, whether that's because of our posture or because of simply habit or restrictive clothing or medical reasons, anything at all. I mean, quite often breathe shallow and that's associated in the body with a fight and flight response. We've been stressed and anxious. So we're going to breathe deeper and encourage the body to relax, to to awaken the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and digest the calm, grounded element of your mind. So when you're ready, start to breathe in through your nose, into your belly. And slowly out. And if you're not used to breathing into your belly, it can feel a little bit unusual. You could place a hand on your abdomen if that helps you to see whether it will move. And if you feel like you're restricted in some way because of the position you are in your chair, if you want to sit up a bit, still be relaxed. But you're welcome to sit away from the back of your chair and try again. Breathe into your belly. And out. And then from there, continue to expand a bit. Breathe into your belly. And when that's full, see if you can also expand your ribs and then up into your chest. So you're full all the way up to the top. And when you exhale, release that from your chest, from your ribs, from your belly. Now that's not exactly how the lungs work, but the visual really helps us. So inhale, fill up the belly, and then expand your ribs, and then into your chest. Full, but not forced, and out slowly, chest, ribs, and belly. Now my breaths might be longer or shorter than yours, so go at your pace. Breathe in as fully as you can without causing stress or strain in the body. There's no rush and exhale slowly. And take just a few more. You might notice some places are easier to breathe into than others. And you might choose to focus on just one particular part. If you're feeling it difficult to breathe down into the lower part of the lungs, let that just be your focus for today. You might already be really good at breathing into your chest and feel it necessary to breathe into the ribs more or the belly more. Take three more, please, if you can. Expand in all directions and slowly release. There's no tension in your shoulders or your face. A deep inhale. And slow exhale. Last one of these full breaths for now. All the way in and all the way out. Let the breath complete, don't cut it short. And then let your breath come back to natural. Now if you're sitting away from your chair back, and continue to sit like that. If you are leaning against your chair, if you feel it's possible to sit up without too much strain, without the help of your chair, you can do so. Feet still flat on the ground, eyes still closed. Hands resting comfortably in your lap. And breathing naturally, which can be difficult after those full breaths. We're not really sure what natural is anymore, but breathing without trying to change it. Perhaps the best description. Observe your breath. A short practice of mindfulness of breath. Please bring your attention particularly to the temperature of breath as it comes in through the nostrils. Cool as it inhale, 
as it comes in. Warm as you exhale. Can you feel a difference in temperature? Take a few more breaths and see whether you can, see, you can feel that, experience that cool as you breathe in. Warmer as you breathe out. See if you can anchor your attention upon that temperature, the sensation of air coming in and going out. And try to keep your attention there. Now thoughts may wish to come in. You may manage to stay focused on the breath. But if sometimes they distract you, that's okay. When you've noticed, you realize, I was distracted. And you come back to your breath. And some days that happens quite regularly. And other days you may be able to observe one or two or many breaths in a row. Neither one is better than the other. There is no such thing as being bad at meditation. I'll give you a couple of minutes, yogis, to be aware of your breath. Your shoulders are relaxed. Your posture is still good. The belly relaxed. Aware of your breath. Let your attention soften away from the breath, becoming aware of the space around you again, eyes still closed, but just awareness reaching out, kind of sensing your orientation to the space. And you can bring your hands to a prayer position in front of your heart. And be kind to yourself, thank yourself for practicing today. And together, let's take a deep breath in and a long exhale. Thank you for your practice, Yogi. Namaste. If you enjoyed this practice, please remember to press the like button and leave me a comment below. Please also remember to subscribe for more yoga videos and meditations. Thank you, Yogi.